Hello and welcome to Lost in Criterion, where we talk about the Criterion Collection and you listen. We are glad, <laughs> glad to welcome back once again our good friend Donovan Hill, sitting in for RoboCop this week. Uh, can you fly, Bobby? <laughs> can you fly, Bobby? <laughs> uh, directed by Paul Verhoeven. Uh, are you going to introduce me? I can't. Yeah. Oh yes, uh, obviously John Patrick Dorgan, always with us. Pat, I'm sorry, I forgot you. You forget me a lot. I was so excited. I'm the only other host on the show. I was so show. excited that Donovan was here. I just wanted oh, to. That's true. I wanted to. I'm excited about RoboCop. And I want to start off. I, and Donovan. I forgot to thank Donovan for being with us on our last episode with Donovan. So Donovan, thank you. That's you should just start calling them, like our last episode with Donovan. That should just be the title of the episodes. Not even a spine number in the yeah. name of the film. Donovan episode. Anyway, uh, RoboCop, directed in 1987 by Par- and Paul Verhoeven, whose name I can't, I, I'm sure I'm not saying correctly, uh, starring Peter Weller, uh, essentially, though Peter Weller we don't see for 90% of the movie. Yeah, starring Peter <laughs> Weller for 10 minutes at the beginning, and then uh, the dad kinda... from that 70s show for the rest of it. <laughs> yes, what? Yes, yes. Uh, the dad from that 70s show, the greatest movie villain in the history of movie villains. Um <laughs> There is there is a lot to talk about with this movie because it's so You're going to have trouble. This is this is going to be tough to do in It's an so hour. ridiculously wonderful. Um and it is the most 80s film ever made. <laughs> it, it is. It is. And it's 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 the most uh Okay. It was Running Man made in the 80s? I maybe. Or 90s. I feel like Running if, Man if was If Running was Man the was 80s. made in the 80s, then it's at a it's a tie with Running Man for the most 80s film ever made. Okay, Running Man was made in 87, so you're uh Okay, there we go. It's so they came out the same year. There you, there we are. So this this movie yeah, just, right. it takes place in a in a futuristic Detroit and it is it is a ultra violent satirization of consumerism, of privatization, of <laughs> Corporations of, uh, I don't even know. Of mega cities. <laughs> of mega cities, of gangs, of. It's... Which is weird. I want to point something out. One of the things I've been reading about lately yeah. has been the fact that there are several corporations attempting to set up corporate cities uh-huh. in the United States right now, which I just think is so weird after watching Robocop this week <laughs> that I was like reading that in the news. Yes. Because we're, it's basically the whole idea that city in Robocop and any of these cities is being basically able <laughs> to go back to the the company town yeah. idea that we we ab- we abolished for good reasons yes because you know we were being paid seventy company, years ago company because money. yeah we don't pay people in script <laughs> we don't pay yeah like but yeah. then like this movie in nineteen eighty seven like actually somehow seems to have hit it right on the nose as far as that's concerned yeah. Yeah, maybe not the method of getting there with giant robots and things like that. Well, it's but very, it's very weird because this movie, um, there's another very human movie, um, Starship Troopers, that's very anti-fascist in the way, the same way that this movie is anti-corporate, and that's if you're not paying real close attention, it seems to be a celebration, <laughs> and not necessarily, not necessarily anti, uh, in that it's it's. It's satirical and subtle in a way. For instance, in this movie, in this movie, the guy who creates creates RoboCop, who who, if there's any hero within the corporation, it's him, uh, is addicted to blow, um, and yeah, and is is kind of an asshole and just well, and he he's he is, but at the same, I mean, he is uh, obviously an asshole, but. He's not a good guy. No, he's not a good guy. I mean, he's guy. not a positive character. The only reason he throws out his idea for this other type of yeah. it's you know, methodology he, he, is because the to, other it was a way to like jump to the top. Yeah, and so he could do to, more blow with hookers. He's trying to posture himself into a into a vice presidency. Um, right. He's trying to put himself in a a better hooker and blow situation. And at the same time, the ultimate villain is the guy doing the other project. It's not the corporation itself, 
And we are no, yeah, that's weird. We're only def- we're defeating the corporation. The only way we can defeat him is to have him be fired from the corporation. Right, and it's weird because the corporation is still there, still trying to make a mega city where <laughs> yeah. millions of workers will die in order to build it. Yes, yes. So they're 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 bad, but they're not bad enough to be the ultimate villain. Right, which is actually pretty amazing when you think about it. That a corporation that's prepared to risk millions of lives, which we they say multiple times throughout the the movie, that this project will is not safe. The million like many of the workers will die. Yeah, it's also a is film not that we're, bad enough to be the bad guy. It is. It's, uh, it's interesting that in this in this film, like numerous times, people who work at this company are just brutally murdered <laughs> on the job site by the corporation. <laughs> like products and or yeah. personnel itself and it is not yeah. even like a thing to anyone <laughs> yes. else working there they're just like oh anyway so if you'll refer back yeah, to the right, graph right. ed 209 but that kills like at least <laughs> six or seven people who work for that company like in present product pre- like presentations and no one yes. is even like no one even seems to comprehend that there might be some sort of legal liability here <laughs> yes. or criminal prosecution right. because Apparently, it is such a foregone no conclusion left. that the corporation is immune from all repercussions. <laughs> exactly, exactly. It's actually pretty, like, when you were talking about the not-so-subtle, subtle underpinnings of, like, uh, that anti-corporatism, yeah. well, you get, I mean, it's, yeah, it's... So heavily there, like, because they also, you hear them constantly talking about, like, who cares if other people, you know, who cares if those people die, Yeah, and all this stuff. And it's like, these people are so absurdly brazen in their attitudes Yeah, that they aren't just a satire of humanity. There's, there's no, exactly. there aren't people like this in the world. Well, none but, that are, none that are this well, open about it yet. I, yeah, right. Give, give the Citizens whole, like, United like, if it gets a couple years to get enough, going. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I, yeah, do... I mean, but that's the the whole notion of the film is if you push it far enough, you could get somebody like this. Yeah. If you let things go far enough, this is what we become. And I, I like it. I like the weird future that this takes place in because the the DJ, the future Detroit in the city looks like Detroit does now. Right. <laughs> right. It's not, I don't think it's supposed to be super future. I always thought yeah. this was supposed to be one well, of those it's, in I the very near it was future. To be, I think it takes yeah, place it's in like 1999. Like 19, yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's it's one of those it's the 80s. 1999 is a whole yeah. 19 years away. Yeah. Actually, when I mean, this film was 12, released only but... like 12 years away and they're like everything will be different. Yeah, I mean, I, just, I noticed years. that 80s movies really thought that like in 20 years the most unbelievably absurd technological <laughs> right. advances were going to happen we'll like in a 20 year space, time frame. Like, yeah. like space yeah. travel, yeah, flying convinced. cars, <laughs> the the sheer amount of architectural and structural redesigning of cities required to make the cities of the early 2000s, <laughs> the, as like, according as to the like 80s, a, would be like a 200-year project of, like, the sheer construction yeah, like, time ac- alone. According to 80s films, like, as soon as the film, like, the day after it's released, <laughs> everybody's going to tear down every building. Yes. And we're just going to, we're going to burn this shit to the ground and we're going to start all over again. And we'll have it done in 20 years. That's why the right. Jetsons built all their cities on stilts, so that they didn't. Have they to didn't tear even it. have a chance to tear it down. <laughs> they didn't yeah, have a chance they to built tear it down. on top of the old. But I, I love that this movie so takes place in a Toledo. future where computers can run a person, but there still has to be an actual female secretary taking notes at the corporate meetings. Right. Well, no, <laughs> and, and then they're still using like tube TVs. Yes, that flicker a lot when you turn them on, yeah. and it's so wild. I I love. 80s future. I love 80s future. Because 80s it's future wonderful. is even, like, somehow 80s future is less convincing than 60s future. Yes. It really is. <laughs> because even when you, like, do something like, you look at Star Trek, okay? Let's take Star Trek, the original series. There's basically nothing in those uh, TV shows that is really recognizable as now, at that time, right? Yeah. They really said, okay, everything's going to be different in the future. But then, like, you get 80s future, and they'll just, like, put a cyborg man next to a stenographer. Yeah. Pop culture is exactly the same now as it will always be. If right, the everybody will have future. big hair. Yeah, and it's, it's weird, right? It's, it's, a, it's a weird yeah. thing, and I, I love it. I love 80s future. Oh, it's, it's wonderful. It's absolutely wonderful. Yeah, stenographers uh, and robots. It's one of those yes. things that were the 80s, the 80s uh, interestingly enough, for a time that is 
certainly when it's portrayed retroactively in other films, when they talk, when the, when, when the 80s is the setting, it's usually a very hyper luminous, uh, bright, you know, neon colored, uh, yeah. but not, usually not like in a particularly dirty setting. But whenever the 80s was casting forward in 20 years, uh, especially when you look at films like Blade Runner or or RoboCop or oh, a yeah. couple other things, the living, city is always complete. Like we are always yeah. living in like the most dystopian yeah. filth imaginable. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like you're never clean. In, this movie, in the this movie definitely does for Detroit what what LA tries or what what Blade Runner tries to do for LA. And it's just this weird sort of. It doesn't go nearly as far. Yeah. As, what, as, I, what I got to point out, though, one of my favorite scenes in the film that, is, that made me laugh. Okay, that kind of fits into this is the when RoboCop stops the boys from terrorizing the woman. These guys are the worst hooligans ever. <laughs> They're not doing anything. Yes, they're just talking to her in like a rude manner. <laughs> yes. Like, when you really watch the film, like, I know the implications that they're going to rape her. Listen, yeah. man, Robocop don't sift that. that shit. <laughs> right, but it really you see comes this gun? Off this yeah, gun's RoboCop in my leg. Like, I will take it out of my leg and put 67 <laughs> bullets into each of you. Right, yes. and never reload. But, like, no, that's the thing, though. That's what I love about it, because, like... It's yeah, wait a minute, he never there, does reload. He actually... <laughs> no, he doesn't. <laughs> And his, just and his that. handgun is like it's just a handgun. It's got it a really, shoot a thousand and bullets. It's, yeah, it. it's like shooting burst fire. How does he? He should be out he, literally every time he. He should be out like trigger, yeah. He, he has like had. three pulls of the trigger, give or take. Me, yeah. yeah. Oh, the eighties. <laughs> okay, whatever. Eighties film. Yeah, it's the eighties. <laughs> but like, my point is, is that like because it's the eighties and we're still pretty much in a pretty the bullets come through his hand. It's actually the yeah, magazine is okay, inside him. Yeah, I'm sure yeah. that actually I can totally believe that. But <laughs> I'm um, fine with it. <laughs> what what I'm saying is is that because of the time that the film was made, they could show literally this man just murdering people. Yeah, and this is ultra violence murder. Okay. Oh yeah, this movie was originally rated and X then, just for the violence. Uh, the scene where right. the scene where shall we say RoboCop is made, where he where he meets his terrible fate. Uh, is awful. Is yeah. one of all right. So in our last episode, our last Donovan episode, we talked about how uh, I had kind of a fucked up childhood because my dad exposed me to Kurosawa films like at an age which no small child should be. One of the other ways where my dad went horribly wrong was that like when I was like ten, maybe, maybe like ten maximum, I'll say anywhere in the like the eight eight to twelve range, but I think around ten. I I went to the library the Mansfield Public Library, and rented out on my library card a copy of RoboCop on VHS and took it Dude, home and watched it. you're not alone. And okay. I gotta say... I watched RoboCop when I was like 10 or my, 11 or something like that. My 10 year old self like, got up on Saturday morning all excited to watch this and got to the scene where he get, where he's killed and like was kind of fucked up after that for a little bit. Yeah, it's it's hard it is, for a kid to process that like, film. You do because, not see that kind of thing. naked sadism and violence in movies well and that's the weird thing about the bad guys they are they are just they are cartoons they're cartoons they're they are they are they are literally like cackling the entire time like cartoon villains they do not literally none of them basically stop cackling the entire film anytime they are on except that 70s show dad explode who just kind of just like cracks wise the whole time but they are literally they are Again, as the film has a certain sense of satire running through it, they are saying this is, in the future, even the sociopath will be so over the top that, like... They'll be even right, more right, sociopath. Because society, yeah. society will be so Degenerate. bad that yeah. the sociopath will have to kick it up a notch. Really step up his game. And that's there's also the sort of the, um, the sense that the... The, the wild wolf will bite that will bite even the hand that feeds it in that film where they where they sort of go uh, where even their corporate overlords who are sort of hiring them clandestinely can't really control them. Yeah. Yeah. So even well, yeah. 
<laughs> the point I was trying to get across a little bit earlier is just the fact that, like, so we have a film, right, where you can do that kind of violence. And I understand it was originally rated X and that sort of yeah. stuff. So they, they were like, this is a bit much. But this is more than a bit much. But in the same film... There's a dude that gets turned into to... goo with acid and then splattered all over a windshield. <laughs> right, yeah. that's disgusting. But, like, yeah. the point is, is that in the same context, because it's the 80s, they have to imply rape in a way that is yeah. almost unidentifiable. Yeah. Because these guys are not doing... They could just be jocks at a bar. It is definitely hilarious how, uh, in particularly in 80s films, yeah, sexuality was basically limited to gratuitous nipple shots. Rude comments. Like, yeah, gratuitous yeah. boob shots. Yeah, nipple shots in, and, 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 and then rude comments. Yeah, in the, ine- was, the inevitable, like... that's all they're doing. The inevitable, that, I like... I mean, that's all those men are doing. Yeah, nightclub scene where there's, like, a two-second yeah. shot of boobs as people come in. That was that was about as far as eighty cinema was was willing to go, but right, right, but and this, yeah, and then this movie barely tales. even went that far. No, this movie yeah. the only no. the only nudity in this movie is the unisex locker room, right? At the, toward the very beginning, I think that yeah, there's, yeah, there's, just, there's I thought it was really weird. I think even that in itself might be something of a. It, it's obvious that Verhoeven was way more interested in just. The human, yeah. the human capacity to do the most unspeakable, horrible things, uh, yeah. to to kill utterly without remorse its own people, to discard human life uh, so casually. That seems to be really the subtext he was going for. There really isn't much of a sexual commentary <coughs> in Robocop. No, there's really not. The, the, there, the loss there, of yeah, humanity, just, which the film is definitely, is, is kind of the film's, you know, that the last, the last human man in order to survive in a world without humanity is literally sacrificed on the altar of, you know, this barbarous world. And then in order to survive has to himself forfeit all humanity and his life and his wife right. and son. He's, he's cyborg Jesus. Right. There's, yes. there's, there is a certain amount of the, uh, you know, the, the film's Which essence is, property, is, right, lack of, is lack of humanity and hence its central character. Yeah. And yeah. to that extent, it doesn't seem like there's, you know, a, a sexual critique really going on here. There's no, really there's not. There's really I just, I, that part was so, for me, somehow, that one scene was so, like, really epitomized 80s violent film to me because yeah. it was just like, these guys are not, we had to, we had to, we, we walked 20 miles out of our way around the fact that they were going to rape her. Mm-hmm. But Robocop still has to step in because he's a he's the good guy. But he steps in basically to stop them from talking dirty to her. Yes. And it's just kind of funny it, because it, I knew what they were like you the, the director and everybody wants to say like he protects everybody. Yeah. And he needs the, they need to show that scene. They need they, they needed that like this is a woman being harassed. But then they couldn't do it and it just came off as really comedic. <clears throat> like you yeah. got these two guys in like leather and like weird haircuts, like well, it's the future. So saying, yeah, future leather and future <laughs> crazy future haircuts. Leather. Future haircuts. Um, it's made out of fruit. Future leather. Yes, of course it has to be. Um, right, actually, I uh, to derail us a little bit, Matt, your no. your comment about calling dibs on uh, on Cyborg Jesus film rights. Um, the the way this movie was written actually, uh, was that the writer and a friend were at a movie theater and saw a poster for Blade Runner. And he said, oh, friend, what's this about? And the guy said, oh, it's a, it's a police officer who hunts down uh, robots. And the guy's literal police officer robots. Robot police officer. That's awesome. Robocop. I love And the then he wrote the movie. Yes. But here's Which the is, thing, like, it's a great, the, the, honestly, the premise of the film is great. In that, yeah. like, it's a very simplistic, but you can fit so much social critique into this premise. It yeah. It's kind of amazing. Yeah, and, you know, even even more than, a, you know, there certainly is that, that savior motif and, and that messiah motif. And even, even more so, it's a, it's a modernization of uh, Frankenstein. Right, oh, yeah. right. I think That's that there's true. not... I wasn't going so much, but I think that there's a some sort of yeah. messiah motif. I think that the... the there's, But there is definitely a... The, yeah, in, definitely in this horrible movie. world, the last good man is inevitably swallowed up, mm-hmm. and the only way he can hold on to any 
to any semblance of his virtues, which, even in his new life, are more half-remembered, you know, vague things to him than the ideals he once held are, is is to literally be sacrificed and reborn as a, yeah. as the worst yeah. fate imaginable, as a fate worse than death. Yeah. It's, it's weird in this movie, I think, more weird is what doesn't happen, what we don't go for. Than what we do go for. For instance, you know the lack of the lack of real sexual implications in in that rape scene. But also, none of our police officers are corrupt, which is something. No, that, which is amazing. If they are. Yeah. But it's none of them are corrupt. They're but they are painted almost unilaterally as impotent. Yeah, they're yeah, they are right because but because that makes of the kind position of sense they're in. Because if it's a completely impotent organization people who are likely to become corrupt wouldn't go to it because they couldn't be... If you're right. the kind of person there's, who takes a bribe, no why go to a job no, where they're so impotent that the, the desire to abuse that power is is a is a empty desire. Right. There are so many other better ways to have unlimited, power. unchecked power and abuse it without any consequences that the, that the police force is, is no longer... The police force yes. is made up of basically people who would normally be yeah, I mean, I guess there's it, it, the police. All, it actually serves to create a kind of weirdly clean police force where they all are either in this job yeah. because they can't find any yeah, other job. Yeah, it's the guys. Or, it's the guys who couldn't or, hack it in the traditional power structures. Yeah. Of or they're the control. weird ones. Like our um, there's a few. Like the the captain of the station. You also get this weird like he's an old school cop. He does this because yeah, he believes in dress justice and things like that. And capital J. You get a few of those. But at the same time, yeah. this 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 city is so corrupt that it, he's that yeah he's incapable of doing anything. That he's incapable of doing anything, and there's no reason to to become a police officer to to try and infiltrate corruption to put yourself in a better position. That you just become a bad guy. That's that's all you have to do. Mm. So yeah, there's. Wait, yeah. I I would like to point out that I can't actually the the one. Thing that you do get into when you talk about that, though, and I understand that because this is a sort of satirical version of the world, it's going to be like this. But this is a completely unsustainable universe that, that exists. Everybody is a uh, is a thief. Who's actually doing any work? <laughs> no, I, yeah, I think there might there might. I mean, I don't want to. I may be overstretching it here. I think there is probably some vaguely Marxist critique of capitalism inherent to RoboCop. And that this is the night. Yeah. This is the nightmare future of capitalism unchecked. Oh no! You're where, yeah, where you're every every right. yeah. This is yeah, this is the is. this is the only inevitable consequence of the the market, the the so called yeah, market, market completely yeah. subsuming and conquering. It is literally Franklin. I want to say it was Frank, Franklin or Jefferson. It is their warning uh, about the, the well, I forget which one of them. Had, one of them had a quote. Uh, early on that said, you know, I believe we must crush in its infancy the new aristocracy that we have striven, you know, striven so hard to stop that is now to be found in our moneyed corporations who dare already to challenge our duly elected government in contests of power and strength. Like it is yeah. it is literally that warning come true that if if deregulated enough and if given free reign, they will ultimately subsume and conquer democracy and replace well, it yeah, with this you, nightmare future. You do get that even like, yeah, that's a pretty like kind of in your face because I mean this corporation runs the city. Absorbs the police station. That doesn't make yeah. any sense. It There's absorbs no everything. Reason. There is nothing in the city right, that and they is talk not about, at its beck and call. Right, and they talk about we were able to like, they said we couldn't profitize this you know in that video display they said we couldn't profitize this they said we couldn't you know i forget all the things he names it's like weird yeah. stuff it's like mattress sales or so i can't remember <laughs> what he actually says because it's all like yeah. okay yeah like, <laughs> you said you we said we couldn't get a profit out of the post office well we did they did all and we they, had to do they, was make stamps four hundred dollars a day no it's it's weird though because you know like I said there's this weird anti corporatism that that at the same time it's not ultimately the bad guy in that when they buy the police department it's not in any way to just make things easier for them right they are striving to stop crime right because are, you have to imagine that this corporation suffers from the same crime that seems to be the yeah. only activity in the city well there's yeah there's a certain yeah. element you get the the 
the the thing, the, the the great moral outrage here is that they bought the police station not so that they could help keep a police station funded. They bought the police station because, to some extent, crimes that might risk affecting them would therefore hurt their profit margins, and they want to be able to redirect the police station at will. Exactly. They would. Right. They, they, sure you get the sense that they would not, happily yeah. order the police station to let the orphanage burn down if <sighs> there were hoodlums hanging around the CEO's limousine. Yes. Right. Yeah. You do I get think, that. I think that is there, that is valid. Yeah. Um, I also like the uh, the sort of Huxleyan uh, uh, entertainment uh, of the, within the this city, in that the news spends you know a minute advertising a game called Nukem. And ten seconds talking about World War Three's nuclear <laughs> nuclear repercussions. <laughs> so it's it's all about Which, the entertainment. Why value. is that game not something we can play? I think that game needs to be played, except it it doesn't seem really fleshed out in the commercial. No, it doesn't. We would have to create the rule system, but yeah, yeah. It's it, I mean, it's kind of played like Battleship. It's but Battleship, not. but with nukes and a bunch of other weird stuff mixed in. Yeah, yeah. We definitely need to. We need to study that really hard and bring that move. I'm sure someone's already done it. I'm we sure could, they have. We could Google we could that. You probably look the rules up on the internet later. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. But yeah, and then uh, I'd buy that for a dollar. You would. Even even oh, even man. their sitcoms. What does are that just, even mean? It's it's you know it's it's catchphrase. It's, yeah, it's pastiche. It is it is, it is making is, fun. Is it is the, the whole... Bob Barker, the hellish Bob Barker of the future. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was trying to figure out because like they yeah. keep doing that and like. Is it just because the idea is that, like, even entertainment has devolved to the point where, like, yeah. this catchphrase is funny because it's a catchphrase? Yeah, it's this Benny Hill with 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 a catchphrase thing, and yeah. it just... It's not funny because it's you know, funny. It's funny because everybody laughs because they know it's supposed to be funny. Yeah, it's supposed to be funny. And maybe maybe when he first said it, it was funny, but by and the time... And maybe they're all so mentally deranged and stupid at this yeah. point that it is funny to yeah, by the time we've heard it five times within the movie itself, yeah, you're it's already like, funny. "My well, God, what's going just on? Stop. Please stop showing me this." But I gotta admit, like, while his phrase was frustrating, the situations that this man kept finding himself in, <laughs> uh, were like, how is this a comedy? This apparently is just like a really low budget porn. Yes. Yes. Well, that's that's why I said it's it's very Benny Hill. It's, it's yeah, very, that's true. Yeah, it's very yakety sax playing while he chases big breasted. Yeah, horses. there's a, there's like yes. a consistent every single time anything happens with him. There's always just like a oh ho ho ho, like here we go again. Which yeah, it's just Which like the whole thing is just supposed to be a, thing? absolutely. It's it is nonsense. It's garbage. It's lowest common denominator filth of the worst kind. Ergo, it is the exact sort of thing that will be broadcast. <laughs> Broadcast, nonstop <laughs> broadcast. broadcast in you know insensate and nonstop through the hellish corporate future world. It is yeah, it is and I can buy consumptive it. garbage. Buy that yeah, but it's that there is nothing to it. That's but the point. My issue with it was is that like most of the things that you see in the film are basically ex- kind of like taking something that probably the director saw and taking it to its just absolute oh yeah extreme right. And that is too, but like, was eighties TV like that? I that's I just don't remember eighties TV that well, and so it's kind of like, was it all uh, pastiche and catchphrases and meaningless nonsense? Uh, well, you got to think about. Uh, I just don't know. I think I think early nineties, late eighties, early nineties sitcoms. You 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 might be able to remember a little better, and they all grew out of. The, I mean, the late eighties was kind of the heyday of the American sitcom, and we have. You know the beginnings of things like you know family member. I guess you do get you do get a like did I do that where it's like this isn't funny. This is funny because you told us it's supposed to be funny and there's a laugh track. Yeah, it's it's the. uh, I guess you're right. It it makes sense. Yeah, it's like if you uh, watch the what the hell is it? There's some horrible show. Uh, Big Bang Theory. I watched. I watched someone who had taken out the laugh track (laughs) of of a given seven minute (laughs) clip of Big Bang Theory, and it is the most horrible, badly written, like, not funny garbage imaginable, but the whole point is like, yeah, that's because they just tell you to laugh. Right. If yeah. you're, if your comedy needs a laugh it's track, funny because It's right. funny because it's this character, so everything he says in juxtaposition to this character is default funny. Also, we're telling you to laugh. Yes. 
Yeah, so yeah. I guess he and did. I, yeah, I guess the director's right. I was just trying to remember, like, <laughs> 80s TV, and I'm like, was that, like, was it all Benny Hill-esque that bad? I don't know. It wasn't, it wasn't that bad, and this is an exaggeration of that, but it's still, you know, it's, it's very, think of, think about Saturday Night Live, uh, you know, once, once they have a character who likes, who, who, who clicks, we just stick we with that never, character. We never, ever, ever, yeah, we, we never, we see him forever. Yeah. Until that the the actor quits, <laughs> yeah, and goes and makes a crappy just, movie, based on the character, which finally kills it, and that's the point of making the movie. I think for the actor, probably <laughs> is I don't want to do this character anymore. Al Franken finally got tired of being uh, being that Stuart Smalley, so he made a Stuart Smalley movie, and now he's uh, now he's a senator. So there you go, and. Uh, and but yeah, kinda, so this and movie, freakishly yeah. enough, kind of a good one. One yeah. that one that yeah, really seems to pay a lot of attention to you know, to the to the stuff that most of them don't pay attention to in terms of the actual <laughs> like mechanical details of working a government. So I yeah. I'm constantly pleasantly surprised that that dude turned out to be actually a pretty good government public servant. <laughs> well, gosh darn it, people like him. They do. They well, some people do. <laughs> some people. Some people, uh, yeah. So um, <laughs> back to uh, back to anyway, RoboCop. Uh, so back to RoboCop. What, what do we want to start? Do we want to start with um, the? Do we want to start with just the the scene where he's <laughs> killed? That entire scene from start to do we? Can we just start with "Can you fly, Bobby"? I think we should just start there. <laughs> <laughs> can you fly, Bobby? The best, the best line in any cinema uh, ever. Uh, sets the <laughs> sets the delivered. tone for for this film. It does so well. Which is weird. The, the bad it gets sets the tone it, in in a what would normally be a really uh, I guess boring and sort of overly past. It, it's a thing that's like, that could have been done so poorly because yeah, we get it. It's the old. Here we will establish the bad guys are really bad because they will heartlessly kill their own for shits and giggles. But it's done yes. with RoboCop's, you know, characteristic sense of just absolute bananas <laughs> pointlessness that it actually does work as an effective way to characterize these men we've just met instantaneously without without being yes. the cliched Darth Vader choking choking out his lieutenants. Now you can tell that Darth Vader really is a bad guy. <laughs> Yeah. Right, yeah, we well it or the Bond villain that all about you know that. like we're going to paint these guys in exclusively primary colors. Yes. We own yes. no shades. Yeah, all all everyone's very flat in this movie, but, but they're, they're supposed they're purposely to be. Yeah, flat. and and they're that's great. It works out great. It, it's wonderful that everybody yeah. is so disturbingly like humanless. Yeah. Yeah. And 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 in that regard, we go from throwing your uh, your own underling out of a out of the back of a moving car in order to try and uh, stop the police and chasing for really you. no reason. What did Bobby <laughs> do? Bobby he was, was just well, there. His name fit. I thought the he line. got shot. Because right. it couldn't have been like, wounded. He did. No, he did. But, he did get but shot. They're in he a did get van. And yeah. they're like the, they're apparently immune to. Uh, any sort of uh, police intervention, because we keep yeah. seeing reports that like he murdered another eighteen thousand police officers this week. Um, yes, and so like we get this thing where it's like he just did it because he didn't like Bobby. That's my. You don't even I mean, know. I don't even I actually, think you can say that. I don't think it's that. It's no. He just did it because Bobby was at hand. Right. Yeah. It it's not even that he it. disliked Bobby. He does. He <laughs> like that's the thing. He is so. He is. They are all such psychopaths. It's not even that they dislike. You don't get the sense that they really actively dislike RoboCop Man when they're killing him. They are just he's at hand, and they need something. They are. They crave the exaltation of ultra violence. They are. They have no personal agenda against him. He is just the nearest victim at hand, and it's been five minutes (laughs) since they've (laughs) indulged themselves. Right, but which yes, begs exactly. the question of how could this group possibly exist without devouring um, itself? Well, uh, honor among thieves. Uh, as long as there are still other people to other murder. people right. to kill. Right. So the idea is that you also get the sense that it's a pack of, of alphas of to sharks. some extent. They are all they are yeah. all they are yeah. all one of another's equals. So none of them will 
But that's that's the that's sort of the what the Bobby scene extrapolates in some extent is that the second they smell you weakness, show any weakness, yeah, you're done. They, they destroy you. Yeah, yeah, they they will turn yeah, that's on true. you that because does, they are. I didn't hadn't thought about that, but yeah, they do. That even helps to paint a picture of this group even more disturbing. That like, yeah, anything happens to you. Yeah, like, and at, you, and at you the need same to go time, buy a pack of hemorrhoid cream, and you're there is yeah, they're they are they are the quintessential hyena pack. They are constantly yeah. cackling, yeah, constantly they moving. They even cackle like a hyena yeah, pack. They, yeah. yeah, they literally at times yeah. quite literally cackle like hyenas, and they are constantly just scavenging off this you know carcass of a world that they live yeah. in. They are the Absolutely. roaming That's hyena pack, analogy. constantly gnawing the bones of this fallen society and eating even themselves. When, when no other food can be had. Mm. Yes. <laughs> you, okay. I extrapolate this yeah. deep, you know, cultural critique from, can you fly, Bobby? And then throwing him. <laughs> can you fly, And then he Bobby. throws him no, on a cop no, no. car. Because of the, the way the film is made, it's not that hard to, to extrapolate. Yeah. Because they are all flat. They are all painted starkly. You get, you know what these people are capable of. With all the characters, yes. you see it almost as soon as you meet them. This is what he's capable yeah. of. And, and in that regard, you know, Robocop is the only one who uh, who grows, but he doesn't so much grow as he recaptures what he right. wants. Right, he, he, instead of grows, becomes Cyborg Man. Yeah, he, he's, he's, which he's sort of destroyed. Actually, which is really, it is the, yeah. it's not so much that he is destroyed. I would say almost that he has somehow been frozen. He he in their the, own yeah. special way with the cyborg thing, they froze him in place, so that he can't devolve. Because this is a, a society that, despite the the, the nonsensicalness of the of the term devolve, is evolving negatively. I would say, and yeah. he is frozen in place as something that is not falling apart. Only, but only the fact that and, he but in order to get there, he had to go through the most horrible. He had to be destroyed. Yeah, yeah and yeah. He, he can he only be, be he can only be preserved him. after he's utterly annihilated. Yeah, it's yeah. weird. I, I I will say that that one of the things that really sold me on this movie is the sequence where he is being rebuilt because he's he's killed and we go to black. And we slowly, and it's all first person. We, yeah, from we his slowly get some reality. For the next like back, ten yeah. minutes, we we get this and I love those scenes. Those are really great. Again, and everybody talking about him, you know, as if he's nothing. He's just a machine because that's what he is. We are we are in the viewpoint of the machine uh, as we as we come back, and it's really it's five to ten minutes of that sort of grainy vision. Uh, you know, inter- the interface popping up with digital interference and, and all the readouts. And, you know, he, he comes back and he comes back. <clears throat> and then he picks up the gun and does the same gun spin that Murphy did. And it's his first sign of, first sign that he's, he's more than what they he think has he, he has. He has some personality on it. Yeah. 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 It's, Which is, by the way, there's so much good in this There movie. is a lot of good in this movie, but man, were the 80s bold and what they, what they would imagine. So bold and yet so not forward thinking. Like again, we get stenographer and then we get like we can erase memories and replace brains and just wild. I yes. love it. I love that kind of futurism where you're like, oh, but we'll still be using this piece of crap over here. So we'll still be using typewriters, but this guy has a gun in his leg. And this guy has a cyborg brain. <laughs> yes. And and the uh can we uh, can we get someone to design an interface that actually way eh, works the way his does, where it's just a death spike you plug into a computer? How does how does that work electronically? Which one? Wait, what? His his death <laughs> the little spike that comes out of his hand, oh, which is how yeah. he interacts well, with the computers, even though no one else exhibits that same sort of thing. Yeah, nobody else has that technology, but yet it's compatible yeah. with every piece of technology he runs into. Yes. Is he literally just stabbing into the computer, or is there actually a port, a port a port. that he's using? It's like, wait, what move? Oh man, this sound. I'm gonna say that that is borrowed, because I swear might, to God, I I've know, read in a book or something the term data spike, and not referring to like the amount of data spiking, but actually as an interface yeah. type in some book or something I, mean, yeah. I read somewhere. 
it sounds super like nostalgic, like familiar. Not nostalgic, familiar. I I don't know what that. I just swear I've read it in a book or something where somebody was like well, you know, think, plugging think, in data. I think spike. the term data spike actually like means something. It does. No, I it does. Know. But I'm I'm talking about referring to a physical object being plugged in. There was some book or something I read that had that in there. I have no and idea. Maybe they borrowed it from RoboCop. Let's. Well, it's unfortunate yeah. because I would probably in in this group I'm probably going to be the one who would know, and I don't know. Yes. So. I certainly don't. I certainly don't. So let's stop talking. Yeah, sorry. It just it felt really familiar <laughs> when I saw it, and not. I've only, seen that, to some before. extent. I think that there's a humorous analog between that thing R two D two always is plugging in to things that just no matter where he goes, yes. even like when they're on Cloud City, R two D two can just bust out his thing and and completely hijack the entire city's computer system. But when RoboCop does it, because it's all Fairhope and ultraviolet movie. His isn't just like a little thing he spins in. It's literally a spike that he punches into the computer yes. and or people. Right, right. He is a, it, <laughs> or, or, or through yeah. the bad guy. <laughs> it's, it's, even, even his act of receiving data Inter- is, a act yeah. of, is an act of like unchecked violence visceral yeah, violence. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. It's, he doesn't, he doesn't download, he stabs USB the computer. He uses a weapon. Yeah. Yes. Ah, isn't it wonderful? Yeah. I like I like that he uh, sort of defeats ED-209 in the same way that old Doctor Who defeated the Daleks. He can't do stairs. Yeah, well, there you go. Yeah, like, yeah, that was so weird. It's like, who designed this robot? Who is this? Who is the <laughs> asshole who was like, oh, stairs. Right. Worst police officer ever. Well, maybe maybe the premise is that uh, this robot will be street level enforcement, uh, and any building that he would have to go he into with stairs, uh, he could just blow up because anything tall enough would be corporate owned, and he's not he's not out to punch. But here, that's a weird thing though, because at the same time, I, you, I do follow the logic on that. But what, my problem with it is, is that um, he operates. This weird robot, okay, seems to operate under yeah. a similar set of slightly modified but similar set of directives that RoboCop operates on. He doesn't yeah. just blow up the building. He is trying actively to kill only RoboCop. Now, mind you, he murders everybody. But yes. he has a target, and he is attempting to pursue and, like, uh... uh but to be, to be fair, to be fair, weird, after right? the presentation, after the initial presentation... Where it clearly wasn't, you know, fully thought out, which is its own little joke about, you know, that sort of corporate R and D. Um, that we go, we go, and it, it kills a man in the initial presentation. Right. Obviously, that project would have been mothballed. So this come in, he's not any better than he was when it was right. So he's still, a, a, but but then again, the reason so he are, murders that guy is because he is unable to, unable to process the data that. He has put down the gun. That he is no longer a threat. Yeah, exactly. There's a lot of bugs in right, the system. But, but, and one of the bugs in the system is that they haven't tested it. Okay, that kind of makes sense, though, I guess, in this, in the absurdity of this corporate yeah. environment. If it's, if it's only been being tested in a lab, then... Well, and know, also, we hear, that the, we hear the main bad guy say that he's, his main plan was to sell it to the military after he perfected yeah. it, calling it a police device. And so, yeah. if you if he's really aiming to sell it to the military, it really kind of doesn't need stairs because then it can just blow up any building that's a problem. Yeah, it's you get Probably, the sense that yeah. they never thought to give it stair workings because this is never a thing that is designed to navigate terrain. It is a thing designed to pulverize terrain into a roughly flat surface right, that can right. walk over. That it can walk on. It yeah. is not. It's not supposed to go into yeah. the building. Right. It's supposed it to raise the building. It's not a police device. Yeah, it is not actually a police device. Yeah. It is a, it's it is a military be a device, device being presented to get f- funding it's, or whatever it is, as a police as, device. It is, as it routinely demonstrates through all of its product tests, it is not a, it is not a device that is designed to be discerning. Uh, right, if amongst right. amongst uh, friend and foe, it is the thing that is designed to be pointed in a direction and, and destroy, set yeah. loose to, you know, lay waste with maximum efficiency, which is, you know, what it does on a regular basis. Yeah, <laughs> to hapless yeah. lab techs. 
Ah, I love this movie. And there's <laughs> yeah, and there's yeah, that sense of it. And... That's another thing that you know there is a parallel there between the cackling hyena gangsters and you know the corporation itself in that they are completely indifferent to just tossing a, tossing away their own people in the most violent way, yeah. and it's not it is not an, it which is, is it's not something that ever crosses their mind. It, which is weird because yeah, there's that there's a very obvious and serious critique of big business in this film. But then yeah, again we get back to the fact that the big business is not the bad guy in this film. It's just a bad yeah. guy. But it's not a the, member. It's of the not big business the who happens big to guy. be corrupt in a way that the business isn't necessarily itself corrupt. Right. It's weird because yeah, it's again like it's the bad guy. the The business is a bad guy, but it's only one of the bad guys. It's like. The film is like, well, we have so many bad guys, um, but we were yeah. only going to focus on this one, the, the the worst one, because we don't have all day. Yeah. But even the CEO, you know, he he understands that RoboCop can't act against our main bad guy when, you know, he, he tells him as much. Um, and so he, RoboCop plays the recording of him admitting that uh, he murdered Norton, the other guy. Mm-hmm. The other and the guy who created Robocop, he had him killed, and that, you know, gets him fired, and then, and then he can be brought to by being case. shot and thrown out of a um, skyscraper. Yes, yes, but uh, but uh, you know, at the same time, there is a certain morality, you know, that the CEO you has. You get, yeah, you get the he, sense he, that the CEO he has, is he has, a, he has an internally consistent morality, which is yeah. that these are the things the things that are hurt the company are bad. And what this guy is doing yeah. is actually hurting the company. He's not yeah. particularly concerned when the lab techs get shot to ribbons during the product presentations, but but certainly not. But you know, he has yeah. his standards. Yes. Even even evil right. has its standards. I yeah, guess. yeah, that's what we get to. Yeah, it's except for uh, our main bad guy, the dad from that '70s show. He has no standards. No, actually, even he has standards, because no one could be his equal. Because when the other guy shows up with a car just like his, he blows it up. Yeah, yeah, well, he has, yeah, he has an internally consistent psychopathy. <laughs> yes, yes. But even he's the alpha of all the alphas. Which is weird, because and those it's guns, a weird actor those to those guns they from. have. Uh, that, but, yeah. Well, He yeah. doesn't, he, throughout he, the film, he, he, plays does, a he does a good well. job. But he's the least threatening man on earth. Because he looks like a dad. It's true. It's true. He does. And even, even there, he looks like a dad. But, oh, yeah, but the guns, I, yeah, I, the blow up things. The guns they have. The, 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 uh, that are basically like tank The ones shells that are designed. Yeah, they're designed to look like these, you know, hyper sniper rifles. They even have a scope on top. But if you tried to fire that thing actually using the scope, you'd lose an eye. You'd just. You break your head. Yeah, you, 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 <laughs> but there's no recoil on them. There's yeah, no recoil it's on them either. I think yeah, they're, somehow they designed some sort of plasma weapon or something. I don't know. It's the 80s. Why not? <laughs> Maybe that's, it's not It's not explosive Explosive rounds. It just literally it's just uh, <laughs> excites, right, excites it's a bit, the yeah, atoms it, until it, they explode yeah, themselves. Yeah, exactly. I think that's what's got to be going on because you can't really otherwise justify an explosion that large using anything that would even be remotely bullet-sized. Mm-hmm. Those things would have to be literally launching tank shells. Yeah. And then we uh, that's obviously impossible. So I'm going with plasma. Yeah. I'll, I'll do it. I'll Why do not? It. I, I do like... This movie has the, Robocop uh, the... in it. It's the name of the film. <laughs> plasma cannons, not unbelievable in stenographer plus <laughs> no. tube TV plus Robocop cyborg uh, killer. Okay? <laughs> it, it, this universe I, can have anything I like else. that... I like that uh, the uh, the few implications of sexuality in this movie are always sexuality is violence. His data spike, for instance, is a very oh, valid yeah, thing it's in, totally, in what yeah. he does. But but also the way that they use those guns when they get they're all are cartoonishly all, everybody's all, are, and yeah, and, yeah and, and reeking of sexual violence. Yeah. Yes, yes, it's a very repressed they, uh, culture. They hold them at their waists, not even at their waist. They hold the guns so that the the shoulder of the uh, of the gun is is at their crotch, right? Which is thank and God they blow things up for them, huh? 
Yes, yes, it is a good thing that the guns do not have. Which would have been a funny scene. It would have been really awesome if you had one guy had just been been completely like had his entire groinal region removed by the gun. Oh, don't want to do that. Use your shoulder. But then again, if you could do that, it would probably remove your shoulder too. So, I guess this gun is impossible unless it's a plasma rifle. It is. It is. But at least, uh, at least those super guns exist so that ED-209 can be killed. Right. Uh, yeah, can, yeah, insert, like, <laughs> only way to make sure that the plot works. Which, by the way, yes. what is it, ED-209, right? Could he yeah, be he more so. shark-like? Like, I know that's the idea, but, like, they even make the, uh, the, the, like, the behavior, yeah. like, the, the, when they, you get a face shot of it, it's a shark. And then it is that point in the yeah. direction and watch it eat things. Sort of, uh, yeah. It's so I do. Tricky. I do love ED two hundred nine mainly because uh, all of the models in this movie are, are great, and they're done by a guy named Phil Tippett. Worked for Industrial uh, Light and oh, whatever ILM Light and Magic. <laughs> uh, he yeah, Light and Magic. He won an Oscar for Return of the Jedi, uh, and now he's doing uh, now he's doing RoboCop, and it's it's simply marvelous. It's beautiful. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, I love all the all the special effects in this movie. I, I absolutely love. Uh, except for the melting guy. That's the melting gross. guy I could have done without. Yeah, I did not enjoy that. That was like, ooh, Especially when God. he, like, splatters. Did we really need but, yeah. that? We did. Well, it's, I mean, it's it's further sort of, you know, there's this abandoned steel mill. He also that's did just Howard full the of Duck. barrel. I'm oh, sorry. Yeah, it's full of barrels of, uh, of industrial waste that are just yeah, sitting like, there. Wait, oh man, I, you so, gotta love this city. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's just it's just further, further, you know, anti-corporatism sort of things. Um, that, that there's so little responsibility here because there's no there's no government interference because the, gov- the corporation owns any and You of the said we couldn't make the government <laughs> profitable. Interfere. Yes. So, instead, they, uh, they just so you know, their, uh, Adam, that there is a 2013 RoboCop reboot, which will star yes. Joel yeah, Kinnaman, we gonna talk whoever that, that is, Gary Oldman, Sam Jackson, and Hugh Laurie. Yeah, yeah. It's it's interesting. Who's that is involved that, that is the that bizarrest cast the for a RoboCop reboot. I think I think isn't didn't Hugh Laurie say no, and they got somebody else to take his place? I feel like yes. I feel like I heard Robo. Uh, I feel like I heard that. Uh, um, Q Lori yeah. dropped out. I don't know that. Yeah, for I certain. remember reading it. Um, um, let me let me see if I can. Um, yeah, I feel like I feel like actually Gary Oldman replaced Q Lori. Yeah. No, Michael Keaton. But, yeah, Michael Samuel, Keaton. Is Michael what it Keaton says on replaced, like all yes, of Keaton our Google Keaton replaced, results. Yeah, Michael Keaton replaced Q Lori. I I do remember. I'm playing uh, character Raymond Sellers. I don't know who Sellers is. Uh, names aren't important in this. Uh... Anyway. Oh, man. Anyway, I'll tell Michael you what Ke- I am going to do. Keaton. I'm going to totally make this what? ED-209 my background on my, uh, on my computer <laughs> there screen. Go. There you go. And this is, this, is the portion, this is the portion where Pat Ghoul's things uh, hey, for our hey, conversation. Hey, <laughs> only because usually we are poorly informed. Who the hell is Joel <laughs> Kinnaman? Joel Kinnaman is uh, some guy, you know. Um, Let's not talk about this no, remake he was in... anymore, please. Listen, the remake is terrible. All right, we don't know yet. I haven't and seen it. And it shouldn't exist. No, it shouldn't it should. exist. There's no reason let's, for let's, it to exist. Can we just can we agree yeah. on that? He Done. shouldn't exist. Joel I will Kinnaman say this. was in the girl with the Apparently dragon tattoo. Apparently, there are amusement parks and... with the ED two hundred nine model where you can actually see it. I uh, see this dude, the guy who Joel Kinnaman. Yeah. Apparently in a ton of weirdo Swedish stuff, cause uh, yes, he's in Johan Falk Barnuf and Manet Torren, and Organizatsa Kwayan. So uh, good for him. He is great. He Good choice. Uh, it would seem he's probably Swedish then, and you know what? They should just they should just uh, bring Peter Weller back to do it. Except he's too busy hosting History Channel specials. I Man, after uh, you, after you, where yeah, he's after credit- you've been. Where he's credited as Peter Weller, Syracuse University, where he's an assistant professor of history. Because Peter Weller, Peter Weller is an amazing. Is that what man. he did after RoboCop? Right, he, was just go. You know what? I've uh, done it no. all. I think I'm going to become a history professor. He is living. <laughs> he is living. He is the living Buckaroo Banzai, and and since he was Buckaroo Banzai, it's fitting. And I'm so glad it happened. 
Man, we're not even talking about RoboCop anymore. <laughs> that's, that's okay. We're talking about Peter Weller, and he starred in the movie, and okay. that's fine. All right. I, uh, is there anything no, else we this can, is a we great can throw movie. out here about RoboCop? Everybody should watch it. <laughs> it's a, we love this movie. Um, of the of the movies where it doesn't really make sense that they're in the Criterion Collection. This is wonderful. Uh, and I'm looking at you. <laughs> uh, I think, I think, Man, this is I think there is a, I think there is a straight-faced argument to be made for RoboCop's con- inclusion. It is a yes. film that is... Well, if there, nothing it else, is the a, visual effects. Well, yeah, it is a film that is seminal yeah. for its depiction of dystopian ultraviolence in the corporate near future gone mad, which is certainly... <laughs> yeah. Was a was a is well, a genre a that enjoyed 80s, enjoyed yeah. a lot of you know commercial success for a good while there in the eighties and RoboCop yes. is you know the seminal the seminal the incarnation entire, yeah. of that of that particularly you know bleak look at the future. Yeah, and then no, combine that with um, you're absolutely right. um, I forgot his first name Tippett's. Uh, Visual effects, and this is towards the end of stop motion. Yeah. When we start really getting yeah. out of stop motion, and we're not going to use it very much this anymore. This is, yeah. This is a really great example of it, and you see it really come to life with ED-209 and some stuff like that. And, I mean, I, yeah. yeah no, it, it's it definitely, it's definitely done very well. Criterion Collection, considering that that same collection also contains Armageddon and Solo. Yes. Yes. This is, yeah. Um... <laughs> And, and on a mention of Let's end it. I think we'll right be here. done with this movie. <laughs> so, uh, join us next time where Donovan will be with us again. Hooray. Uh, and we'll be talking about High and Low, Akira Kurosawa's uh, 1950s uh, contemporary sort of police procedural. High and Low, or as it was translated that. for American audiences, everything's going to happen in the living room for like two hours. <laughs> <laughs> hey. That was, its, that was its working English anyway, title. Well, <laughs> I believe, I would believe that. We'll talk more about that uh, next time. Please join us, and uh, thanks for listening. Bye. 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 Can you fly, Bobby? and Criterion, a production of With Two Brains. The show is hosted by Adam Glass and John Patrick Owatari Dorgan. Jonathan Hape did the music, and Adam Glass also edited it all together. Feel free to contact us by email via lostincriterion at withtwobrains.com or join us on the web at www.com.